Okay, folks, welcome back to the lab. We're uh, on number two of our kits for kit week. While I'm basking in the sun down in Florida. Um, anyway, let's reach in there and pull out the kit for today. Oh, that's a nice big one here. Okay, so this is what we got. I think I know what that is. It's just from its uh, demeanor here. Okay. Alrighty, let's have a close look at this one here. I think it's a radio kit. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Some mechanical work to be done here. Antenna. Here is PC board. And an instruction sheet that is uh, completely in Chinese. Wow, lots of components too, like 56 parts, 56 parts. I'm not too sure how useful this is going to be to me, but um, let's have a look at the PC board to see if anything is marked on it. So we've got a surface, one's a little surface mount. I see on this side, it could be fun. And then everything else is on this side. Oh, things aren't marked really, really well. This <laughs> this kit could prove very, very interesting. And okay, here's the bag of all the parts. I will go through this off camera and make sure we have everything. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to kind of figure this out for myself. Yeah, this is a TDA2822. Uh, it's a little dual audio amplifier. I guess they must be using it in like a push-pull arrangement here. Yeah, it uh, looks like what they're doing. Yeah, so that's this thing here is a CD9088CB, which is a single chip FM tuner, I see. This one's the eight turn, and this one's the seven turn. Boy, boy, oh boy. Oh, by the way, there's a third IC. I thought it was just a little transistor, but it's not. This is a, a three pin device that is a AM receiver. So there's your AM receiver, there's your FM receiver, and that's your amplifier. I did indeed find some English instructions for this uh, at a Canadian site called universalsolder.ca. I'll leave a link to this uh, down below. And um, yeah, I'm gonna get, I'll get started on this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to solder on that, uh, that little SMD chip. And I'll do that on my main bench. Okay, that went pretty good. Uh, they laid out the board very nicely, providing long enough uh, pads here for the leads to get a, a needle nose soldering iron in there to, to solder them. So I just went ahead and soldered it by hand rather than breaking out the surface mount soldering devices that I have. They're great to have, but only if you're doing a lot of work. I mean, to break it out for one chip is too much work just getting everything ready. But yeah, this worked out very well. So yeah, you know, although the board is not the highest quality in the world, it's very, very thin. They have actually done a nice job in sizing the pads for that chip, so it makes the soldering a lot easier. All right, let's continue on the rest of it.
right, so you missed some things because the uh, camera ran out of uh, memory space and uh, so we missed a few minutes, which I can't get back. So what I did in those few minutes um, were I put the battery terminals in. You can see that this one here that joins the two batteries together, that goes into the back of the case, into the battery compartment. The other two battery terminals go here into the front of the case, down into these slots. And uh, I've mounted the speaker in with a little bit of hot melt glue. And uh, this pointer, that, that, this is the way the pointer has to go on. Uh, I, you know, the description here in the Universal Solder instructions, uh, it made absolutely no sense to me whatsoever, but through a lot of trial and error, I got it to fit. And this is the way it has to go. And a couple of other things. Uh, I mean, the, these resistors are just terrible. I mean, the, the, the bands on them are sometimes incomplete, sometimes missing, and uh, I, you know, I couldn't read them. The resistors are tiny. They're either 1 8 or 1 16th watt resistors. They're just absolutely tiny. So I, I had to measure each one, and that kind of made things a little bit uh, longer. Also, be careful of these coils here. Uh, they're, they're only one wind apart. One's six turns, the other one's seven turns, and the way you measure it, don't look at the top of them. Look at the bottom with the legs sticking up and count the turns within the the legs, and one is six and the other is seven. You have to put them in the right spot. Uh, let's see what else. Oh yes, there was one capacitor was was missing, and I had to make it up. That's, that's the, right here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but uh, you see these two together? Yeah, I, I had to get two of my own because the I think it was a 68 nanofarad capacitor it was just it was just missing. So I put two together in parallel to get that value. I didn't have the the correct value, and I had this um, this uh, 10 nanofarad capacitor left over. There's no call in here for 10 nanofarad capacitor, so I don't even know why they included it. Um, two of the 100 nanofarad capacitors is our leftover and this electrolytic capacitor here uh, was also left over. I think the 10 UF capacitor. So yeah, those are all left over. And uh, as far as uh, the antenna goes, this thing, I what I did is I, I first glued the white holder onto the board. Then I used hot glue to um, glue the ferrite into it. And uh, this is just slipped on there with a little drop of hot glue to hold it in place. And they also don't tell you about how to wire it up. So there's a hole in the, the board right here. It's not used for a component or a screw. And uh, I, I put one of the leads down through that, the one that connects to here. And the other one I brought across the top of the board and went through the mounting hole at the at the top so yeah that one has to go you could print both of them underneath that way I think that probably would be better in retrospect and that's the anything else I should mention yeah this uh, this thing here it comes with a sticky on it but it doesn't stick very well so I'm gonna have to re-stick it on but I still had it stuck on there already and it fell off and I have to re-stick it on and use a little bit of uh, hot air to warm it up and hopefully that the stickiness will stick a little bit better then but uh, so that's it. That's where we are with it right now. Uh, oh, cool. yes, and the antenna. Um, I don't know if, you, if we ca capture that or not, but uh, yeah, that just screws into the back here. And I, I before I screwed it in, I soldered on a, a little wire. It has to. It needs to connect up to the the circuit board at this point here. So that uh, I'll go in like this, and then I'll connect that over there, and then these other wires here have to be connected up to where they go you know, to the battery and to the speaker so let's uh let's continue on with that and uh, hopefully we won't run out of uh memory again it was quite it's it's been a long build so far i'm going to get this stuck on there because you have to stick it on before you put the pointer in so i'm going to go do that and then i'll be right back Okay, so this uh, this little L-shaped part of the pointer here, the actual pointer itself, uh, needs to go into this slot here, across here, and then sh shove the whole thing down. So it's a, 
I've done this uh, already a couple of times, but it's a part of the lost footage. So we'll try this again. All right, now I think uh, at this point in time, I've got to hook up some power to it somehow and uh, adjust the capacitor, the tuning capacitor. I don't have any AM stations around here at all, so I can't check the AM side of things. But I turn on the power. picking up a ton of noise down here in the lab. I'm going to have to take this upstairs to try and uh, tune it. We have a, a number of strong radio stations in town, four of them actually, and uh, the, the lowest frequency ones are around about 95 megahertz and the highest frequency ones is up around 102 megahertz, so they're, they're all pretty close together. But I was not able to receive any one of them. I am receiving something. There is a point on the dial there where all the noise goes away. So it's picking up a carrier of some kind, but it's not being transmitted on it. And I don't know what frequency that is at. And uh, I don't think it's within this, this video here to actually try and find that out. I do have a, a, a tiny SA, which I can use to um, modulate and transmit at the in the fm band and i can try and figure out where that is actually receiving and see where i went wrong with it but uh, at this point in time i'm just going to i'm just going to wrap it up and put it away until such time that i have uh you know the opportunity to investigate a little bit further kind of disappointing i mean I, and i you know i would i would say that it's not it's not a typical beginner's kit it you know with all the the problems that i had i mean it 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 wasn't really that hard I mean, it wasn't that complicated but having to you know take out the meter and measure every resistor having the problems with components missing and you know yeah and you know that wire being not long enough to get from here to here uh yeah there's a, just a, a number of things and of course it's not working. Of course, that could be my fault. I mean, I might put a capacitor in the wrong place or something like that. But again, I, I, it's not It's not gonna be a part of this video. Sorry about that, folks. You know, you win some, you lose some, I guess. But I'm sure if I, if I get the opportunity, I'm sure we can figure out what went wrong here. Stay tuned in a couple of days. I'll have another kit to put together for this kit week. And uh, we'll see you then. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.